Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Oh, ho, ho. oh, ho, ho. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Oh, ho, ho, ho. Hallelujah. Oh, the Baba. fingers. The three interior fingers seem to be on both hands. Uh, the ones that have been giving you the most pain, you've had pain up uh, in the upper part of your hand. Uh, but right now there's a healing flow. Just receive it. If you've had any type of arthritis, uh, any kind of pain that's been in your joints, uh, in your fingers, in your hands right now, uh, there's a healing flow for your miracle. Jesus, for such a time. There's somebody here that's had a problem in the right eye. Some condition that's been in the back part of the right eye. I don't know what it would be medically, but God is giving you an operation even now on the back part of that right eye to have you uh, have a total miracle. Uh, you have had touches uh, of healing, but God wants to give you the completeness, uh, the wholeness even now. Uh, so receive it uh, in the name of the Lord. Be healed and made whole in Jesus' name. There's someone that's had a condition over the right eye. Oh, in the, in the forehead area, perhaps in that sinus region. But God right now is giving you a miracle. Yes, there's somebody else with a sinus condition in the upper right cheek, especially in that area. It's been disturbing you. But right now, <laughs> Jesus is bringing forth a healing and a deliverance for you. Someone here tonight that's had problems in the throat area. But right now, Jesus is bringing forth that miracle for you. Receive it in the name of the Lord. Look to Jesus, the great physician, the healer of body. Hallelujah. Oh, what a healing Jesus. You restore, refresh, and renew what I healing, Jesus. For such a time as this arise on healing wings, someone with pain the right elbow right now God's bringing healing if you've got pain in your elbow just receive the miracle the healer is here what a healing 
Jesus I found in you what a healing Jesus you restore someone that's had problems in the throat swallowing it's been there for some time every time you swallow you have a problem it's been more in the upper part of the throat than the lower hallelujah but right now receive that miracle oh yes there's another person that's had a continuing pain in the left shoulder area the shoulder blade but right now God's giving you a miracle just reach out and receive it. Let's all worship together. What a healing Jesus I found in you. What a healing Jesus restore, refresh, and renew. You're my healing, Jesus, for such a time as this. want to welcome everyone that's come to be with us. Good to have our folks have come in from Minneapolis. S Sister uh, Jane was telling me, I believe, are, are you the pastor from down in Atlanta? Come up. She was just telling me an interesting story of how you got here. Come quickly. Just share it with the people. We haven't had the privilege of meeting you yet. So many we haven't, but God bless you. Good to have you. Praise the Lord. My name is Stephen Shelley, and I pastor an independent church in Columbus, Georgia. And uh, we were a part of a movement that believed that the revival and the moving of God was for another day, not our day. But um, there was a problem, and that was uh, we didn't believe that because once it happens to you, it changes your philosophy and your theology. So we've been experiencing, again, old-time revival and I don't know why I'm here, I'm honest. Uh, but I'll just say this, and I, I believe that. I'll just say this much. Um, just a few weeks ago or months ago, I was praying, and I said, Lord, you know we need something. We just need something. Everything is good. Uh, I've been preaching since I was seven years old. I'll soon be 30. And I pastored since I was 17 alone and the Lord just blessed me with a wife and she's with me tonight and but anyway I, I I'd never really heard of sister Ruth but I was praying and her face came before me and she smiled and I had a grandmother that was a minister and she had the same sweet smile and the same sweet spirit but I, the only way that I recognized who it was was a few years ago I had seen an ad for the summer camp and I had seen Sister Ruth's picture and her mother's picture. And that was three or four years ago when I saw the picture and I knew there was something about it. She came to my mind many times since then. But on that night, the Lord just brought her face to me and I began to ask around and try to find out and the Lord put me in contact with a little book you've probably heard of called Glory. That's why we're here. The Lord made the way. I don't want to say anything else. Oh, hallelujah. <laughs> <laughs> hallelujah. 
Well, I, I tell you, that makes me happy. You know, one of the things that we learned in Jerusalem years ago that God's very good at advertising for you. <laughs> and uh, I, re I remember s several times uh, we had angels that told people to come to our place. And, and it was wonderful. People, <laughs> people that were told to come where we were worshiping at St. Peter and Galli Cantu, and they turned to greet the person, and the man had disappeared, and there was no place for him to go, and they knew that they'd been spoken to by an angel. So I'm, <laughs> I'm so glad that the Lord is faithful. I think that we're all here because of those great hungers that we feel in our hearts for that greater thing in God uh, that God is bringing forth by His Spirit. And, of course, what He is doing is that He is uh, He's just challenging us to praise and worship together and let it happen. Amen. Oh, yes, just... <laughs> Oh, yes. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Hallelujah. You know, the healings are coming while we're dancing. Oh, they're coming while we're marching, while we're running, while we're doing uh, 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 these... Uh, Israeli dances, oh yes, <laughs> while you were running through doors tonight, uh, hallelujah, that, you know, those are prophetic acts, prophetic acts, you're, you're just going through new doors of opportunity, new doors uh, uh, of, uh, in, not only in the natural, but in the spirit, just moving into that new realm of the Holy Ghost. <laughs> How many feel like you're going a little higher each day? You know, you know, it takes, we find at summer camp meeting, it takes about two weeks to get everybody ready to receive. Oh, you know, we're receiving in the meantime, but it takes about two weeks to really get camp meeting going. And then... We discovered, like with this weekend, we had Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, Friday and Saturday, lots of people. By the time Sunday night came, we had a, we had a, a, a sort of a, a floodgate, didn't we? And then so many go home, and you start all over again. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, by tomorrow night, <laughs> we'll be all ready again. Hallelujah to touch. But you know what God's doing? He's teaching us more and more how to come into these realms so that we can just, oh, yes. <laughs> oh, yes, that we can just live there, live there. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. I like it when brother said he didn't know why he was here. I like it when we don't know what God's going to do. Amen. We can go to those other places where it's already programmed. I, I was invited to speak later. Yeah, they're doing a very big, big event down in Orlando at the end of April and invited me to come and speak five minutes. <clears throat> and, you know, after I saw the advertisement, I, I was almost disappointed I had turn them down because <clears throat> I would have liked to have had my picture there with all those others that are going to speak five minutes. But you know, this isn't the day for those programs. Oh no. <laughs> this is the day for us to come in and lose sight of time and do like we've been doing morning, afternoon, and night and then morning, afternoon, and night and night to and morning and afternoon, sitting in the presence of the Lord. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. We didn't come even to see one another, although I love the fellowship. We have come to be in the presence of the Lord. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. Good to have Brother John from up in Malacca here. And we're going to give you a chance one of these nights when we get started earlier to say something. <laughs> I'm reading tonight from Acts. But let, before I do, let me just mention my book. Some of you may leave. Some of you don't know that my new book came in yesterday, Revival Glory. I'm real excited about it. Brother Vaughn Gerald says it's better than the other book. Uh, I hope I've learned a little something in the meantime. <laughs> anyway, it's sort of, uh, well, it's, it's sermons that we preached summer before last at the camp meeting, a few little bit from this last year, and we've put it all together in this revival glory. And I want to encourage you, if you're able to get a box of them at least and take them home and sell them and send the money back, you can take them on consignment, get them out in your church, get them out in your, your bookstores. They're not in the bookstores yet. We just received them yesterday. And so these are the very first ones that are available and you're welcome to take them home, leave your name and address, and after you sell them, now you can have, send back 60% of the cost, keep 40% for your ministry, and that'll help you too as you're serving the Lord. We're workers together with God. I'm reading tonight from the book of Acts. book of Acts, and I'm reading from <clears throat> chapter 3. <clears throat> Verse 19. Repent ye therefore, and be converted, that your sins may be blotted out. When the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. And he shall send Jesus Christ, Christ, which before was preached unto you, whom the heavens must receive until the times of restitution of all things which God hath spoken by the mouth of all of his holy prophets since the world began. So speaking on the latter part of verse 19, when the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. I believe that we're farther along than a former generation was because in this day and hour, the Lord is making a people to know that it's only in his presence that we are finding refreshing and revival glory. Amen. Not only have we moved ahead in the sense that we know that it's in his presence, but he's also teaching us how to be in his presence more and more. We always knew that if two or three gathered in his name, that there he was in, our, in, in the midst of the people. But even though we quoted the verse, we didn't always feel his presence, and we were not always conscious that he was there, except that he had promised he would be there. But one of the things that the Lord taught us in such simplicity in Jerusalem was how that we could um, cause the presence of the Lord to be manifested every time we gathered. And he showed us in the simplicity that if we would praise until the spirit of worship came and worship until the glory came or the manifestation of the presence of the Lord came that we could know the glory of God or the presence of the Lord manifested to us every time we gathered. 
you and I are learning more and more how to bring the presence of the Lord in. We invite him. We have a tent of hospitality that we are now spreading. You know, there's some people that you just don't go to visit because you know they really don't want to be bothered with company. Then there are other people <laughs> you love to drop by without them knowing you're coming, without a prearranged appointment, without an invitation, because you know any time you come, you are welcome. Hallelujah, hallelujah. And then the, there are churches that may say they want the presence of the Lord, but really... They are very uncomfortable when he shows up. They're like the folks that weren't expecting the company. But then there are others <laughs> that say, Lord, not only any time, but we want to be those that woo you. We want to woo you with our voices. We want to woo you with our love. We want to be those that are saying, Welcome, Holy Spirit. Come, presence of the Lord. Hallelujah. And when you come, we don't have to have an, uh, such a schedule that we say, You've been here long enough. Go on and let us carry on with our own arrangements. Oh, I tell you, we're going to linger more and more. He's giving us a lingering spirit. Oh, we just want to be in the presence of the Lord. He doesn't need to be healing us. He doesn't need to be speaking to us. He, we just want to sit down with him in heavenly places. We want to experience his very presence. And if he speaks to us, we're happy. If he reaches out and touches us, we're happy. If he gives us a great revelation of himself, we're delighted. But we just want to be refreshed in his presence that his very presence is thrilling to our soul and thrilling to our spirit that refreshing that comes from the presence of the Lord hallelujah and you know what you find is this that his presence is getting stronger and stronger I sometimes walk in the, in the dining room to come into the meeting and you're not quite sure if you can make it all the way up the aisle to the platform. There are, <laughs> there are overwhelming senses of his presence. <laughs> You sort of get stuck in place a few times. You don't always fall out, but you feel that you need to steady yourself. You've got to reach out and hold a chair. Or just you're not moving forward in the same forward pace as before because there's such an overwhelming sense of his presence. If ever a people needed to be refreshed, it is today. Amen. Many people don't want revival because they see revival only uh, as all of the work that will be involved in it. They see the time that it's going to take, the demands upon their time, they see uh, the, the, the uh, handling of the people and all of the things. I, I commend uh, the Brownsville Assembly of God Church. Uh, they have handled uh, revival beautifully. Uh, all of their people have put their shoulders to the wheel. Uh, <coughs> and they have uh, carried the responsibility of seeing that others are blessed. Uh, but they too have learned how to come in into the very refreshing of the Lord. And God wants us not to feel that revival is burdensome. You may come into the service weary. I, I say come whether you're tired or not to the service. Sometimes, you know, when you're tired, you get more out of it. Because a lot of your resistances... 
You're too tired to put them up. <laughs> You're too tired to, to resist. It takes too much strength to resist uh, those things that you've been resisting. Amen. And suddenly, when you relax, suddenly uh, you begin to feel uh, the, the Lord ministering to your heart and ministering to your spirit uh, in ways that perhaps you haven't experienced before. Uh, that newness that's coming in which suddenly uh, the vision of the Lord begins to refresh. Uh, the, the voice of the Lord begins to minister. Uh, suddenly the song of the Lord uh, begins to be the victory uh, that comes in to your very soul we are going to experience such times of refreshing that that which uh, 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 Paul was writing is not only going to be uh, uh, from the standpoint uh, the, of positionally sitting in heavenly places uh, with him, but we are uh, going to love to get together with the brethren uh, so that collectively uh, we can sit together uh, in heavenly places uh, with the Lord. Now, we haven't moved fully into it. We haven't, but we're going to. We're closer than we were. <laughs> and then, you know, sometimes it's good to have a few of us old timers here that know what it was like at the height of what God was doing by His Spirit. I recall as a child in the revival uh, that we gathered and just sang little choruses that were so simple, three and four words, uh, but we sang them sometime by the hour. Uh, there was such a presence of the Lord, such a glory that came down uh, in the midst of the people, uh, and we just wanted to be together uh, and to feel that great sense uh, of the presence of the Lord refreshing times of refreshing not just one time but folks again and again we're going to have those waves overwhelm us in order that we ourselves can bring the wave to someone else hallelujah we're going to know the enlargement so we can bring the enlargement to them we're going to know the touch so that we can bring the touch to them we're going to have the new experiences uh, so that we can be those who are first partakers uh, and then are able to impart uh, and bring others into it. Uh, I've been so thrilled at the great increase and in growth uh, that we've seen in Brother Benny Hinn's ministry this past year. I had the privilege of being with him in the Miami Crusade, I'm not sure, I think that was around October. <clears throat> and uh, he said to me after the service, we were several, I was having dinner with the, their team after the service, and he said, tonight was the greatest meeting of my life. He said, I felt as if I took one more step, I would step into heaven. <laughs> Oh, that's refreshing, folks. Amen. He said, I felt as if I took one more step. I would step into heaven. And he was sort of looking to see what I thought concerning it. I said, you've stepped into the new. And now you'll be able to bring others into the new. But I said, it'll only get better. He was almost looking at me in disbelief as if it couldn't get any better than it was that that night. Uh, I wasn't in Nashville a few weeks later, but I heard uh, that he said in Nashville, uh, this meeting was the greatest meeting of my life. Why? Because he's experiencing going from glory to glory to glory. When I was in Jerusalem over New Year's, I had taken over a couple of Benny Hinn's uh, 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 videos, and I didn't know what they were because I hadn't had the opportunity to see them. So we sat down together with our family there, and 
we watched the Sacramento meeting, which was only a little over a year ago, less than a year ago. But you couldn't, the difference between him now and in Sacramento was so amazing. I mean, it was almost like they weren't the same people. He had moved into such a realm of glory since the Sacramento meeting, a realm of liberty, a realm of the manifestation of the very presence of God. Hallelujah. When we let the Lord manifest his presence, he will. Amen. Hallelujah. If we hold back in any way, there will not be that same reflection refreshing and same manifestation of his presence but we're only going to see God doing it from glory to glory for you and for me times of refreshing in the presence of the Lord desire his presence Oh, yes, let his presence be that which you desire. Don't come to the house of the Lord just to have your need met. Don't be focused on your need. Be focused on entertaining the Lord. Hallelujah. We've been, we've been focused on the Lord entertaining us. But oh no, <laughs> I want to entertain the Lord. Hallelujah. I want to be that tent of hospitality that Abraham, where, where the, the Lord came and he was able to entertain him. And in like manner, you and I can be those that woo his presence and entertain him. Someone said to me today, Sister Ruth, why do you whistle? I don't know. I guess I'm a little peculiar. <clears throat> but, you know, I started whistling on a platform. I can't whistle in the natural. <clears throat> Never could. And besides, ladies don't. You know, ladies don't whistle. But I found myself sitting on a platform, <laughs> and suddenly I found myself whistling a little bit, <laughs> And I suddenly was conscious the glory was present. And every time I start whistling, and it's sort of automatic, it's almost like a little sign, I'm here. <laughs> My spirit knows he's there before I know it. Amen. Before my mind knows it. Before my thoughts know it. Amen. My spirit is already responding to the very presence of the Lord. Hallelujah. And I just start this little whistle. He must like it because he gave it to me. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I've been told don't whistle in public. Don't whistle on these great platforms, but I tell you, the platforms are getting greater and greater where I whistle. How, <laughs> oh, bless the Lord. Times of refreshing. Oh, your soul being refreshed. David said, thou restorest my soul. There's a restoration that's taking place in the souls of men and women in this day. He is restoring our soul from the cares that have been upon us, from the weights, from the heat of the day, from the desert experiences, from the fiery trials, from the situations that have come, we gather together to be refreshed in the presence of the Lord. <laughs> Oh, refreshed, a continual time of refreshing, being lying down in green pastures, drinking of still water, having our souls restored in his presence. We're so glad there's so many pastors here. And pastors need the refreshing 
perhaps more than anyone else in this day, uh, carrying the weights and the responsibilities uh, of the body of Christ. Uh, oh, yes, uh, he is restoring our soul. <laughs> oh, refreshing, uh, refreshed in the presence uh, of the Lord. Uh, hallelujah. Don't be worried if you don't always hear from heaven. Don't be worried if you're not always seeing from heaven. Don't be worried if you're able just to sit in his presence. His presence will minister unto you. Sometimes we're so anxious to get a word from God, and we believe in words from God. But sometimes you can be so anxious to get a word. You get a word, but your soul still goes away without being refreshed. But you need to sit in his presence and be refreshed so that when he says go, you'll have the strength to go. When he says go, you'll have the courage to go. When he says rise up, you'll have the ability to do it. Your soul will be as a watered garden whose waters fail not because of the refreshing that has come in the very presence of the Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah. Lots of times people, <clears throat> when I, it's been my privilege to train thousands of people through the years in ministry, and sometimes one of the questions people ask is, how do you know what to do in a service? I said, well, oftentimes this will be a married couple, and I'll say, well, you're the host and hostess of your house, aren't you? They say, yes. I said, well, when company comes, do you know what to do? I said, who tells you? To invite them in. Who tells you when to offer them something to drink? Who tells you when to help them by giving them food? You know, we do these things automatically because we want to be hospitable. And I said, in the same way you look after the house of God. Oh, somebody comes in and somehow uh, in a service uh, you know that there needs to be uh, this offered or that offered and nobody else is flowing in the Spirit to offer it. Uh, so you begin to move in the Spirit yourself uh, and let it be, let it flow through you uh, to meet the need in the service. Uh, hallelujah. You just begin to get that feel uh, that you want to see people blessed. Uh, amen. You you see somebody in need and you don't want them to leave without being prayed for and if nobody else has perceived their need and you have you just reach over at the end of the service or sometime and minister run to them oh the things of the spirit are not difficult we make them difficult and I'm afraid sometimes we go to so many seminars that we learn to make it even more difficult. We go home with wonderful notebooks on how to do it. But God wants it to be easy. <laughs> Hallelujah. He's coming into your house. <laughs> he comes into your house. You want to entertain him. Others are there with you, so you entertain him together. You look after Jesus. He's the chief guest. Amen. And you're the host and hostess. And you entertain the Lord. You sing another chorus to him. Amen. You lift your voice again to him. You praise him a little bit more you encourage your friends to join in together and sing another song and lead another chorus oh yes you're entertaining the presence of the how do you keep your your guests when they come how do you keep them there longer you keep entertaining them 
Either you're telling them another story or getting them to tell another story and about the time they're getting ready to leave. Oh, you say, well, tell me that one. Oh, I remember that time. <laughs> and you begin to get them to tell another story and have something else to drink. My father, he always loved coffee and he loved pie. But he always had a problem getting the pie and the coffee to run out at the same time. So he always, as he was telling stories, he had a little more coffee to go with his pie. And then he had a little more pie to go with his coffee. And a little more coffee to go with the pie. It went on like this. And the stories just continued. He could entertain people longer than anybody else that I know. And my brother and I learned to tell stories from Daddy. We, weren't, we never got as good as he. But he just loved people and loved entertaining them. Well, this is what you do in the presence of the Lord. If you're afraid the Lord's going to go away, just woo him a little bit more. Or pour out your soul unto him praise and worship sing another song oh Lord don't leave now remain with me talk to me a little more I love your presence Lord <laughs> but if you're busy you know how when you go and visit somebody they don't tell you to leave but you know that you should have left ten minutes ago Oh, yes. <laughs> oh, yes. That's what we do with the Lord. But there are times of refreshing. Times of refreshing in the presence of the Lord. He loves to hear your voice. He loves to hear your voice lifted up in praise and worship unto him. He loves to hear you as you sing to him. He loves to hear you as you pour out your love unto him. He loves to hear you as you entertain him. And as you entertain the Lord, those times of refreshing come. Because he lingers, he remains with you, he abides, his presence is manifest, and you feel his glory, you feel his glory, his glory only increases, and you feel that abiding presence, that abiding presence, that abiding presence of the Lord, hallelujah. <laughs> and yea, the Lord saith this unto thee, I shall teach thee how to be the tabernacle of praise and worship unto me. I shall teach thee how to be the choir director and the choir all in one. I shall cause thy voice to be trained by my spirit and the song of the Lord that floweth forth from the depth of thee shall be sweet. It shall be very, very sweet unto me, saith the Lord. So very, very, very sweet. Oh, I come unto thee and I give thee new giftings. I come unto thee, and I refresh thee with new anointings. I come unto thee, and I stir up those things that have been dormant within thee of a long time. And yea, thou shalt be refreshed by my spirit, even as it moves greatly in and through thee. For thou shalt become the instrument the glorious instrument in my hand. Oh, glorious, so very glorious shall be the revelation that shall pour forth from thee. For I have entrusted thee with much, and thou shalt have a greater ease, yea, in the days to come. And thou shalt not struggle after the things of my spirit, but my spirit shall flow with ease through thee.
let's gather forward and let's sing in the spirit. Hayarabanda, yarabo, yayanda. Hayando, yaranda, yayando. Hayanda, yaya. your voices in the spirit and move in a little closer so others can come of refreshing in the presence of the Lord. Times of refreshing in the presence of the Lord. Times of refreshing in the presence of the Lord. Times of refreshing. Let a little suede come to your body and I In the 
to worship but I thought there may be several that would like to share a vision or a revelation from tonight if you've had a vision or a revelation something God's spoken into your spirit while we've been worshiping some insight you didn't have before something God just dropped into your understanding just come how many would like to just share something come brother one after another just step up the secret things belong to God, but the things revealed belong to the people of God. I can see you having trouble walking, but that's... 